Hello and a warm welcome to you. A couple of days ago, I published a video based on this picture, a still frame taken from a short video clip that I shot from the top of Traprain Law in East Lothian in Scotland. Today, I want to uh, explain uh, once again why this picture is impossible to take on a flat earth and uh, but do so in a slightly different way uh, to the original video. I'll post a, uh, a link to the original video in the description box for this one. So what I've done here is to uh, take the uh, still frame and to just adjust the level slightly um, so that the mountains are a little bit clearer to see against the sky. I was standing at the top of Traprain Law when this particular um, shot was taken. There is a trig point on the top of Traprain Law at 221 metres. So my camera height was at least 221 metres. It was probably 222 because it was mounted on a tripod slightly higher than the benchmark of the trig point. The Hopeton Monument is 210 metres and is 8.2 kilometres away. That's this tower here on the left hand side of the screen. Now what this means is that we are looking slightly downwards towards the top of the tower. And therefore, if the Earth was flat, then anything that is 210 metres above sea level or uh, more than 210 metres above sea level should appear in our field of view above the red line dotted across the screen. However, we see three mountains, all of which are considerably more than 210 metres above sea level at their summits, and yet they all appear completely below the line. And this is very obviously impossible on a flat earth. But just to make it a little bit more clear that this is impossible on a flat earth and not what the flat earth, a flat earth would predict. And also to illustrate that it does match what a spherical earth predicts. I took the figures you can see on the screen and put them into Walter Bislin's curvature calculator which provides a graphic model of the uh, objects that, uh, for which you place uh, size and uh, distance uh, for into, into his calculator. So rather than just getting numbers back, you actually get a graphic image like the ones in the bottom of the screen here. Now I've done this for each of the three mountains plus the uh, Hope to Monument and Byers Hill on which the monument stands. And I've done it for a flat earth and for a globe earth. So the red and yellow uh, rod here represents the total height of the tower plus the hill that it is standing on, 210 metres. And the grey mountain um, shape in the background here is uh, to represent each of the three mountains. When you put the correct figures in, you see that for the flat earth, the top of the monument comes close to the base of the mountain. We should see nearly all of Ben Lomond nearly all of Ben Narnain and nearly all of Ben Im if, if the uh, earth was flat. All of them should appear above the red line. The red dotted line here in, uh, I've drawn over Walter's um, graphics, show, uh, shows the same uh, location as the red line on the screen above. The shot above is a cropped version. It's not distorted in any way. It's simply cropped. Now on a globe Earth, the prediction is that Ben Lomond should appear just below 
the uh, red dotted line, which is exactly what we observe in reality. Then our name should be completely below the line. And again, that's what we observe in reality. And Ben Im also completely below the line, although slightly higher than Ben Narnain, and that is exactly what we observe in reality. Now, I've heard criticism of Walter Bistin's calculator. Some have said that it does not take into account angular size, or uh, putting it another way, it does not take into account perspective. Well, it does. The size, the height here of a 210 meter object close to the camera is much greater than the height of an object that is 974 meters, but further away from the camera. Small object appearing larger in our field of view because it is closer to the camera. That is what perspective says. That's what perspective is and what angular size actually is. So Walter's calculator most certainly does take into account perspective and angular size. The other criticism that has been levelled at it is that it takes no account of the atmosphere between the observer and the object. But it does. Walter has factored in atmospheric refraction into the uh, calculations and you can apply varying amounts of atmospheric refraction. I have opted for a fixed a standard atmospheric refraction for these particular uh, modelings that I've done at the bottom here. Um, on a different day the amount of refraction might be somewhat different and the mountains might appear either slightly lower or slightly higher than they actually do in this, uh, this observation. Uh, but it, the varying the amount of atmospheric refraction uh, doesn't make a, an enormous difference uh, to the observation. I've now made this same observation on three separate occasions on three different days, all at different times in slightly different weather, weather conditions. And on all occasions, it looked very, very similar to what we see here. Now, if you're still having trouble uh, understanding why this is impossible on a flat Earth, here's another way of perhaps thinking about what this image uh, is actually showing you. Instead of just a line across the screen, I want you to imagine, and a, a monument at 210 metres, I want you to imagine that instead of this monument, there is actually a wall, the top of which is 210 metres tall, 210 metres above sea level, built right across your field of view. From a side view, it would look something like this. Instead of Byers Hill and the Hopeton Monument here, we have a 210 metre wall built across the field of view. Our camera at Traprain Law is looking just over the top of that 210 uh, metre hill. The field of view being over the top of there and everything above. Clearly, we should be able to see the mountains in the distance, Benim represented by the large green triangle here. I've represented Benim in proportion to the size of Traprain Law and the hill. To give you an idea of just how much of Benim should be seen. Anybody who has uh, looked over a wall will understand that if your um, point of view is below the height of the wall, you can only see extremely tall objects that uh, jut up above the wall. As soon as you start to get above the wall, you start to see objects that are smaller than the wall itself. There is obviously an area here that you cannot see, but everything above the blue line drawn on the screen here should be visible on a flat surface.
This applies on a flat surface. On a curved or sloping surface, uh, it's a completely different story. We're still looking over the wall, but the area that, that we cannot see is greater because the ground slopes away from our position as observer. And so it is entirely possible for a mountain like Benin uh, to be uh, below our line of sight over the top of the wall. So this is what we observe in reality. Camera height, the monument, the mountains. And if we imagine that there's a wall at 210 meters, if there was a wall at 210 meters with my camera at 221 meters, I would not be able to see the mountains at all. If the earth was indeed flat, then I ought to be able to see those mountains above the wall. They'd be higher than this, uh, but what I've done is simply crop out a little piece of that picture and paste it in there so that you can see uh, the mountains above the height of the wall. This is the reality. This is what we actually observe. And it proves that Earth is not flat.